Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, one and all. Thanks for joining us at the episode number 17 of the BRM Brown Bag. Today, I have an esteemed guest, uh, well, very, very well known in the uh, business relationship management space. Uh, Jeff Warren is joining us all the way. And uh, welcome, Jeff. Thanks for taking us and giving us this opportunity to run down your memory lane. How have you been doing? I'm doing well, Suresh. It's good to, to hear your voice again and see your smiling face. Excellent. Uh, all, all is well. All is well. So, Jeff, why don't you give us, give our viewers um, uh, a view of what's been your journey into the space and how did you land up on the business relationship management? We always um, helpful to know about your background and experience. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting story and not unlike a lot of people, I think. Uh, and, and many people who are watching this have heard me say this way too many times. Um, but I was uh, an IT executive at the Estee Lauder companies, a uh, global company in New York, wonderful company. Um, I was leading the applications development area. I had you know, a lot of people reporting to me. I had you know, all of these areas like retail and e-business and data analytics, and I had my kingdom. And the CIO brought me in one day and he said, uh, I need you to lead a a new area for us called BRM. I said, well, what's that? He said, it's brand relationship management because we were a company of brands. Right. He said, we need to get closer to our brands and understand what their strategy is and what they're doing. I said, yeah, no problem. I could do that. Thinking I was adding this onto my kingdom. Right. And he said, no, you're just doing this. And I was so, it was the first time in my life I ever yelled at one of my bosses. Right. And I basically said to him, if, if you wanted to fire me, why didn't you? I thought this was a nothing job. Right. And, you know, how I do this already. Why do I have to do it? And I didn't understand the depth of it. I didn't understand the possibilities, the potential for it. And so uh, I didn't have much of a choice if I wanted to stay there. So I, I took it on and uh, used it to reinvent myself and reinvent what it could be. And so I, I built the BRM program there from scratch. Yeah. Um, yeah. This was back in 2005, 2006. So there was no BRM Institute. There was no BRM standards. It was We were really just learning as we went. Right. And uh, we failed quite a bit <clears throat> because we didn't know how to position things. We didn't know what it was supposed to be. And it's it's one of the things that I think that has benefited me in my consulting career because I know what doesn't work because I've lived it. Right. And I know what does work because I've lived it. So I spent a good part of that time building the BRM program uh, at the Estee Lauder companies, a global program. And I think one of still one of the most successful BRM programs that, that I've come across, they're still uh, sustaining it there. Uh, I left Estee Lauder about six years ago now. Right. And I right. uh, started my own consulting practice and I work in two areas, which is helping companies build, develop and uh, evolve BRM programs and training and coaching BRMs to become high performers. And then working in the design thinking and innovation space, right. which you right. might think, well, that, how are those two things connected? The reality is that one of the areas that I think BRMs need to work more in is, uh, is really helping companies think differently, innovate and, and use, uh, whether it's technology, human resources or finance, use those facilities to, to uh, advance the goals of their business partners. So it's been an interesting journey from what is BRM uh, to now trying, now trying to help others build these successful programs. And uh, as I said at the BRM Connect keynote last month or two months ago now, uh, whoever is watching this that is involved in BRM, consider yourself fortunate because it's a wonderful field and uh, offers more potential, I think, than any other uh, position in, in, in an organization. Excellent. And it's always a pleasure to hear you speak from real world experience, right? Because a lot of consultants yeah. can preach some things, but some of few yeah. people have gone through that. So you get the merit automatically, right? So yeah. this theme of this episode, uh, Jeff, is to build a a BRM team and a program, right? So I'll give you a little bit of a context of how organizations typically um, create BRMs and BRM teams, right? So they find that there's an opportunity that fill in, but they don't have a dedicated FT that you could hire. So they say, hey, you know what, Jack, you've been doing this service delivery management role. Can you just add on to this BRM role? That's how it starts, right? They don't really have that. They haven't really seen the value, so they don't want to invest on a dedicated person to do it. So they start with something, they already have a full-time job, they also start doing it. So what do you think of such kind of scenarios? They don't really know the value of BRM, they, they are very skeptical about it, they want to get something started off. So how do you 
uh, advise people to get into that journey? How do they start their uh, first steps? Yeah, I think you characterized it really, really well. Um, you know, one of the things I did a presentation called the top 10 reasons why BRM programs fail and how to avoid them. And the, one of the first slides in that presentation is the Nike words, just do it. And I put a big red line through it because that's what happens. It's right. companies just say, oh yeah, we need to do this BRM thing. Uh, go ahead, go ahead and do it. Oh, and by the way, they don't necessarily say, you know, Bob, since you're doing this, can you take it on? What they do is say, Bob, take this on and we're going to give you four people where they get four from who knows right but it's never the four good it's the four people nobody else wants you know and they just right. dump them on bob and bob's got to now try and start this right um brm is not a just do it organization or capability you really have to dive in deep and make sure you understand what you want to do what do you want to get out of the program how do you want to affect your company again i said this earlier brm can impact a company more than any other organization in IT, in finance, in HR, if you really think about what you want to do, what your goals are, communicate it well, market it well, and execute it well. Right. And that all starts, all starts with a strategy. Right. And, and, and I, Go ahead. No, no, I was just thinking that that strategy sometimes is very fluid. You know, uh, Jeff, we start something, but they say, okay, you know what? Let's not spend too much time on analysis paralysis. Let's yeah. Let's yeah, get things yeah. done, right? So it's not a full-blown strategy, if I if I might push it, right? Is that okay? Is it still okay to start with that? Yeah, yeah. So 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 that's so the funny thing is that when people hear strategy, sometimes they they shudder, like uh, I don't have six months and I'm not hiring an army of consultants. Right. A, a strategy document is not that. A strategy effort, you know, it's you're talking like a four to six week effort. You're right. talking a document that has. Really, you don't want it to be too involved. You don't want it to be too detailed, very high level. And you right. want it to be, you know, 10 to 15 slides, but it is a manifesto that outlines, this is who BRM is. This is what it does. This is the value and impact that it brings to an organization. Here's where it starts. Here's where it stops. Here's how it connects with these different areas. Here's how it's going to measure success. It's really simple. It's really, really simple. And when you have that, not only does that outline what your BRM program is going to be for the BRM team, but more importantly, it out, outlines it for the business partners and it outlines it for, and I'm just going to use IT for, for this session just right. as an example, but this applies to HR as well. Right. It outlines for IT. It's so funny that most organizations that I talk to, uh, you know, they, some of them have some problems connecting to the business partners and there's a lot of reasons why they're, they're, they're misfiring there but almost all of them can't seem to connect it into IT. And it's because, no. first off, if you're in IT, you don't want somebody else in, in between you and, and the business partner. You don't. You want to feel like you're connected with them. Right. And when, a, when there's a lack of a strategy, there's a lack of an understanding of what BRM is. So what happens is there's, there's a, a conflict and a fight about, I own the business partner. No, I own the business partner. Why am I, and why am I with you? Why am I needing you? And Either that or they, they resent them so much that they just want to go around them. They want BRM to fail. Right. But when you have a, a strategy that says, you know, here's what we do and here's what we don't do, it's very clear because, by the way, most times in organizations, they move BRM right towards service delivery or service management, which is a death knell for, for BRM. But when you have this strategy and you can say, to, and your CIO has supported it. You go back to IT and say, this is how we work. Let's talk about how we make this work better. And by the way, I'm not here to take your job or your, your communication with the business partner. I'm here to make it better for you. I, I'm, I work for you in a sense right. to make your lives better. But the strategy on the other side, there's this, this uh, preconceived notion that business partners understand why, they, why BRM is there. They have no idea. There, there's, there's this idea that Everybody in the business is so intricately involved and, in, and excited about IT, and they're not. They just want to grow their business. Absolutely. So, so when you have a strategy and you're able to bring it to the business partner doing a roadshow and say, we're building this capability called BRM, and here's what it means to you. Here's what we're going to be able to do to you. Here's how we're going to work for you. And by the way, here's what we need from you. Now there's a common understanding on the business partner side of how it fits with them and how they use it. There's an understanding on the IT side of how it's going to work. It just, it enables success. And it's, it's uh, mind boggling to me 
why organizations, some organizations, still insist on Bob take four people and you know you're going to be the the main point of contact with with the business, which is uh, is just terrible to do. So and, and, it, and it, that's one of the reasons that I I find out that how do you give uh, Jeff an opportunity of what people should be pick who would probably fit into this role of BRM, right? Because today they are either into service management role or service delivery role. Oh, you seem to have some spare time. Let's do BRM. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do you get yeah, that yeah. people to be selected correctly? Yeah, so there's two actually, two really good points you're making there. Um, I'm gonna take the second one first. And that is, again, one of the points I bring out about why BRM programs fail, I call them extracurricular activities. <laughs> BR, BRM is, is full-time. It right. is not part-time. It's not, right. can you do BRM and also do some project management? Can you do some business analysis? Can you handle the service desk? Well, if you want to do that, get some more people in project management or business analysis or the service desk. Don't right. create BRM to try and do that. That's insane. Right. And BRM is when done right, and if it's really defined right and has its full depth and breadth defined, is something that you don't do part-time. You can't do it part-time and be effective. And if you're asking BRMs to do this part-time, you're going to fail with what you want to do with BRM, unless really all you want them to do are those things. At that point, right. why do you need BRM? Right. But the first question you asked was interesting, which is who makes a good BRM? And I thought I used to have the answer to this. <laughs> and I thought it was, you know, just get the best people from IT. <laughs> no, not always. Uh, you know, it's, I found that there were some really good people in IT, but for the most part, uh, and I came from IT, which is why I'm using the IT example. Uh, for the most part, I found most IT workers are too technical, too right. technically focused, and right. they speak technical. Right. And so that is, that's really, you know, pushing everything back towards IT. So that didn't work. Correct. So then they said, well, let me hire people from the business side. And uh, when I was at Estee Lauder, it was in the brands. And then I found, because they know what business folks need, what the business partners need, and they can connect to the technology easier. But then I found out they were actually too intimidated by the technology. They didn't understand it. They <laughs> couldn't answer the questions. And I kind of realized, I kind of came to this realization, it doesn't matter where they come from. Right. And what drives me crazy is people put out a job description and say, here's what you need to know. And they could still miss 100% of the time. BRM, you have to understand what's in somebody's head and what's in their heart. You have to understand, do they, do they have those things that you can't teach? Are they, do they have this confidence, this executive presence? Do they think strategically? Do they really challenge themselves innovatively to try and help an organization grow? Um, do they have a passion for successful, um, uh, just, you know, every time I say the word success now, Aaron Barnes has done this to me. He told me I, he doesn't like using the word success. And he and I have this debate going on because I think the word success is, how do you not use the word success? And every time I say it, he ruins my thoughts. So if Aaron, you're watching this, you got me. Um, but, you know, what do I need to do to make my business business partner more successful and more uh, more have more of a growth focus and meet their business goals? So I think when you're looking for a BRM, it's, it's not anything you can measure with the tangibles. It's the intangibles. You can teach them how to do certain things. You can teach them how to be better communicators and better managers and better leaders, but you can't teach some of those other things. And to me, that's what makes a strong BRM, uh, which is why the interview process is so important. So I think that's spot on. You talked about head and heart and going beyond that, uh, things around what they need and, and bring that the extra pair of eyes for your business partner. Uh, the question becomes is, you know, how do I measure the value of a BRM, right? This becomes my top-down question when I sit with my board. Okay, you had three or four new BRMs who had been onboarded. So what change have you seen? Uh, what is the value that they bring in? I mean, to your point that some of these BRM roles are very focused on some of the intangibles. So how do you put a point across the board or the value that they generate? Or that kind of a cookie cutter metrics <laughs> that they can measure? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, when, when I work with a lot of organizations on metrics, um, I never walk in and say, here you go, here they are, go measure yourself, because uh, metrics are, are very um, customized, personalized to an organization. Right. They're, they're very connected to the, organizational, the organization's culture, the organization's goals, um, a lot of different things that are important to the organization. And... 
uh, again, when I see metrics being published, they're, they're a good guideline, but nothing more. You have to understand the organization and what is important to that organization and what is it that's going to make them successful. Right. And then you've got to tie BRM metrics towards how did they help along those lines. And, you know, there's, there's your, your metrics, which are your hard metrics, you know, the, the hard numbers. And then there is your measures, which right. is, you know, more of a gauging of, of how things are going. On the metric side, <clears throat> it's really tricky because you have to be careful of two things. One, not to get a false negative or false, or false positive. Right. So I've seen metrics like how many ideas did the BRM bring to the business unit? How many projects were completed on time? Uh, is that really talking about whether or not I want to invest a couple of million dollars in a, in a BRM program? No, I mean, I'll, I'll give you 10 ideas today. That doesn't make me a better BRM. Right. And if projects are done on time, that might have nothing to do with me. I could be a terrible BRM, but the projects are done on time. Conversely, I could be an excellent BRM and everything's late because of things out of my control. So those are metrics I think you have to avoid and focus more on metrics about what is important to my business partner. Did I deliver things that were of value to them? Right. Did, I, uh, <clears throat> did I introduce new ideas that they were able to incorporate to meet their business goals? Um, there are just, there are metrics that you have to do that, that aren't um, specific just so you can say that you have metrics. Right. The measures to me are more important because the measures me uh, measure more about um, the, how, how, what was the, um, the, the, the impact to a business partner from a business, business partner's perspective? Because I, you could be the BRM for, for a business unit and you might be on their, um, their inner circle and you might not have introduced any ideas that they produced and you might not have done any projects that impacted their business values and you might be adding enormous value to them right? because you've connected them with the right people on the IT side that didn't cause them problems because you've anticipated things and prevented outages from happening because you communicated well when outages did happen so they were aware of what was up and down because you added new ideas and thinking to conversations they were already having and helped them avoid problems. There are so many things that a BRM can do that is more about a, uh, an emotional measure, I guess you would say, from a business partner that says, Suresh was excellent for us and, and he helped us strategically and he helped us think differently. And to me, that's where value comes from. If a business partner looks at this and says, you know what, we're better off because Suresh was here, there's your value. Now, there are other things. Did they, cut, did they cut costs? Did they find new efficiency? Did they leverage solutions you already had? Those are where you're starting to get more into your metric area. Those are the other areas that will give you your tangible numbers. Put those together and present them to anyone and it's, it's, it's money well spent. Um, but when you see organizations that just list these standard measures and metrics and you're looking at them you're like, but that's not proving anything. Usually those are the metrics. Those are the organizations that go away eventually or have a lot of a hard time succeeding because nobody can really relate that to the value that it's producing. Absolutely. I think spot on to combine with metrics and measures to see it in totality. That's important. Yeah. So in terms of a program of a BRM, who do you think is best suited to run this program? I mean, is it going to be from a strategy office? Is it going to be the part of CIO organization? Think about like IT BRMs, just like take an example as an IT BRMs. Who do you think was going to strategize this whole program and uh, just make sure that it's going to be driven? What kind of support and how do you start that uh, conversations of building a program? I literally had this conversation the other day with a, with a client of mine. When you're building this program out, the BRM organization needs to be in a position where it is empowered to make decisions, it is influential at the right levels, and it can get things done. Meaning, in my mind, uh, and my advice to every organization I've dealt with is, it needs to be part of the office of the CIO. There needs right. to be a direct line and direct connection to the CIO. If that is impossible for some reason, then I think it belongs more in, in a strategy office, right? Because it is a strategic organization. Where it has a lot of problems is when it falls into a particular area. Uh, again, using the IT example, if it falls into enterprise architecture or it falls into applications development or infrastructure. Uh, in HR, if it fell into benefits in, in one area. In finance, if it, if it, if it reported into uh, capital planning. The reason why it's a problem when it falls into those areas is despite the best efforts and intentions of the people leading those areas, 
that BRM organization is now going to be tied to the, that person or that organization's metrics, meaning right. it's going to focus on applications development or focus on benefits or focus uh, on capital planning. You can't help but not because if I'm leading that area, I'm going to make sure my organization is serving uh, the needs of our customers and meeting the goals that we have. But uh, more importantly, if you're dealing with a business partner and you want a seat at the table and you want to be able to influence that business partner and you want to be able to have this strategic partnership and relationship, that business partner, you want to be dealing with them at the highest levels possible. They need to know that when I'm talking to you, I'm going to use you as the example, when I'm talking to Suresh, I'm really talking to the CIO. He is the CIO for me. Now, I know you're not, but, you, I, but when I'm talking to you, I know that I don't have to go to seven other people or right. that hope you can get, get this on a list because I have to have the confidence in you to know that you are empowered. You know, the, the expression was that you have ink, that you, know, you can make a decision, that you can um, influence things or that you can get to the right people. When it's buried in an organization, what tends to happen is the business partner starts saying, why do I need Suresh? Right. I need to get this done. I'm just going to call the CIO. Right. And so it's, you know, it's the go around that happens again. And that ends up uh, not only um, changing the, the credibility and the validity of the BRM in the business partner's eyes, uh, it also creates confusion because now everybody's going around everybody else. So if you truly, this goes back to strategy, if you truly define your BRM organization to be what it's supposed to be, to be the strategic and impactful and innovative organization that it can be and make a, a difference, become a strategic partner, you've got to position it in a way that it's able to function that way. It, it's just, uh, per, it's, it's necessary for success. Absolutely. So in terms of you define a program, now, is there a kind of a path that you see the program to be more uh, full blown and fully effective? Is that a particular timeline? Because people talk about, okay, I'm going to initiate a program. How much time does it take to get this up and running? Um, can I do something like a, MVP in the next uh, four weeks time that is doing it? Or do you think that we have to set some reasonable expectations of how this program will mature over a period of time? Well, what are the, and, and what are the milestones that we need to keep in mind to see we are making the right progress? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, there is no answer to that. Uh, there, and I don't care if somebody tells you there is an answer to that, they're, they're lying to you uh, right. because right. There, there's no answer. It, there's so many factors that come into play when you're talking about a, a particular timeline. Um, the timeline I'll tell you that doesn't work is two weeks. You right. know, it's you need time to do this. But uh, I also counter that by saying you also don't need three years to do this. Right. And you know, I, I worry when some sometimes when people say, "Okay, let me plan this out and do it right." There's this urgency, like, "No, we've got to get it done right now." Right. And it goes back to the just do it thing. Right. You wouldn't build a house that way. You know, you wouldn't build a house by saying, I need this in two weeks, go start, get the, get everybody in there and build it. Um, you really want to make sure that you're doing it right on the, by the same token, you're also not going to say, well, I have the land. I hope to move into this by 2027. Right. right? So there's this, there's this blend. And for me, again, I think your, your first step is, is a strategy effort. And before you actually write your strategy, if, if, you're, uh, if you really want to do this right, you take a step before that. I call it, it's just a discovery phase. Right. And that is not for the company to do this per se, but an outsider, whether it's a consultant, it's somebody from another department uh, in the organization, somebody they trust, but somebody to take an outsider's view to take a look at what is the current state and what is working well now, what's not working well. What is the business partner sentiment of the provider organization of IT? What, have, what, is, what do they see? Because so many times or IT organizations, uh, again, to use the example, build it based on what they think they, the business partner needs from their perspective. Right. The reality is ask the business partner what they like and what they don't like. And I did this for a client recently who thought they had really good relationship with their business partners. The business partners liked them and they were right. The business partners love them. But what they didn't know was that the business partners were incredibly frustrated that IT just designed things and gave it to them and had no idea how they were going to use it, no idea how they worked. Right. Business partners were very frustrated that they would put in requests for things and never hear back. There were all there was a whole laundry list of things that was really bugging them that related directly to their their customer engagement, as they called it in, the, in this place. Um, 
And so when you can do this discovery effort, and that doesn't have to really take a long time, right. but you can have somebody look at what is the current environment look like? What is the business sentiment look like? How do you um, process things today? One thing I tell every client is look at the intake process because that's always the one that causes the most frustration. That's always the one that's broken. And what you usually find is that not only can you put BRM in place to connect the two things and build the bridge appropriately, if you will, you find a lot of inefficiencies and effectiveness within the IT organization itself that comes out, that it's usually siloed, people aren't talking to each other, et cetera. So discovery takes, uh, you know, you, you take a few weeks for discovery and it's amazing what you learn. You use that to inform your strategy, build out what your strategy is, what's best practice in the industry, what works well, how can you design this well? And then from there, you move into the third step for me, which is just execution. But execution is, you know, execution, I usually use, you know, immerse, assess, and act as a, uh, a three-step process. Before you start executing, you've got this BRM team, which you've got to train and coach for kind of leaving that part out. Um, but you want to immerse yourself in the business unit that you're covering if you're a BRM. You want to understand them from the inside and from the outside. You want to shadow people, see how they, what they do, what are their documents, their postings like. Uh, immerse yourself to understand what, what they're about then assess what that means. You know, where are the opportunities? Where are the challenges? What can I help them with most? Do a SWOT diagram. Um, now that you know these things, start building your 100 day plans and so on about what you want to address first, because now this is, this is really how you build a strategic partnership by saying, I understand you. Here's what I'm seeing as your challenges. Did I get this right? Here's the way I think we ought to address it. If I'm a business partner, I'm, I'm please sit down. You know, you're here to help me with those things. Right. You're not just there so I can get a ticket escalated. <laughs> it changes the game. Um, and then at that point, then you start executing on a lot of those things. It's really not hard. It's just, you got to take the time. So, you know, if I had to throw out some sort of general number on how long it would take, I would say from, if you started uh, something, you did the discovery and you did the strategy, do the training, I would say six months, you know, six months to a year. And I know I said, don't let anybody give you a timeline because they're lying to you. I can't tell you that that's the right number for every organization. But as a rule of thumb, yeah. you know, you want to spend time on strategy. You want to get the right talent. You want to train them. And then again, it's not training like go get your certification and you're done. Yeah. Certification is kind of a foundational thing. It's constant training and evolution on different things that you need to do to work with your business partners. Um, and then it's, it's never done. It's never like, okay, BRM is functioning, we're done. It's how do I grow and evolve and move it up the maturity model uh, to make it even better? So um, my strongest advice to anybody listening to this about how to build a program successfully is take a step back and take a breath, figure out what you want to do, figure out what the environment is and what fits in best, build a strategy for it, get the right team, train those people on, on how to really run BRM well. Again, I, I used it in the keynote. I'm talking about beyond the certification. Um, and then from there, then you, you have the ability to start building, acting, and growing. And don't try and aim too high when you start. You know, aim low. Start low. Here's where we're going to start. But let everybody know that we're going to move up. And here's how we're going to move up. Because if you start low and don't tell people of your plans, they're going to think, well, this really isn't what I expected. Well, no, it's not. That's where we're starting. You know, we got to get this going. So excellent. So it was a great conversation, Jeff. Always a pleasure to keep on hearing from you. But we have all come to the end of the episode with so much thank you. But any closing comments for anybody who is going on and getting excited about starting a BRM team and a program? What is your last final thoughts for people to get motivated and excited, pumped up? Uh, my my final my final thoughts on this is anybody that is in this field should consider themselves very lucky, but you've got to take advantage of this. Take advantage of the opportunity that you've been given and don't just settle for being okay. Um, you know, there, there was a, uh, a quote that I, I use quotes in all my presentations, a quote that I used at the end of the uh, keynote presentation from Michelangelo, and it, it said something along the lines of, the, the problem isn't that we aim too high and miss. The problem is when we aim too low and make it. Right. And so right. when you're in this field, don't just look at it as I just want to make sure I'm doing these tasks. Think big. Think right. about where this can go and challenge yourself and your team and your organization to do things better. It's a wonderful field and, and uh, you should be fortunate that you're, you're, you're a part of it. 
Thank you so much, Jeff. I hope uh, viewers, you had a great uh, session from Jeff talking about building teams and an effective VRM program. So we will stay tuned and we will come back to you for the next episode. Until then, stay safe. And thank you so much again, Jeff, for joining us today. My pleasure, Suresh. Good talking to you.